Hello and welcome back. This is Sherry with Heart and Soulful in the studio today. And we are uh, second video into our new series. So I have to, first of all, if you watched the first video, uh, my apologies for having the little coughing fit at the end. I actually ended up having to turn the camera off before I was quite ready um, because I wanted to mention one more thing about um, the descriptions. So on my videos in the description, if I've made reference to sometimes it's products or other videos or um, maybe a, a link to something else, those will always be in the description. And what I also like to do is put a, a link to the playlist for this entire series so that if you are kind of watching a video and it's maybe one in the middle, you can find the playlist easy and go back and, and watch it from the beginning. So always read the descriptions because also if there's ever been some kind of issue or something's come up or if there's an update or something, I will always put that in the description uh, as well. And then also link to my Facebook page uh, where I kind of uh, may, may post uh, things here and there uh, in between videos and that sort of thing. So follow me along in there if you do Facebook. I'm also on Instagram, Pinterest, all that kind of stuff. So um, I don't post everywhere all the time. So uh, you'll just have to kind of follow along wherever you might do your social media. So the other thing too that I should mention is uh, in my last series, I ended up doing a drawing at the end. It's going to actually be this Friday. And uh, I did that because I hit a thousand viewer, uh, a thousand subscribers during the series. And so that was great. Thank you, everyone. And so I did, I'm doing a little drawing at the end. And what uh, what that's going to involve is things from that whole series project. It's a whole happy mailbox full of stuff, all kinds of wonderful things. So there was a lot in that series. And so that's a really um, kind of a fun, a fun thing to do. To enter, all you have to do is comment on any of the videos in that series. And then uh, your name will go in the drawing, which I'm going to do on Friday uh, this week. So this one... Uh, I will probably end up hitting 2,000 subscribers during this one. I think I'm just over 1,800 right now. So if that happens, I'll be doing a drawing for this one as well. And I think I might do a similar kind of thing. So um, things that you see me using in this uh, series will end up in a box at the end. So uh, if you'd like to anticipate that I'm going to do that, go ahead and leave comments in any of the videos in this series and your name will get entered. So I just wanted to mention that on top of this as well. So today um, we're going to continue on with um, this finish. And like I said before, I'm going to try to break these videos down into short um, bite-sized pieces so that you can go back and find the video. For example, this one's going to be on doing some coffee, uh, coffee staining techniques to get this book cover. So you can use this technique on lots of other things. And I had actually, um, I watched a video and I think I went back just now and looked to see in my history what video inspired me um, to come up with this technique. And it, I, I couldn't even tell for sure because I've watched maybe three uh, coffee making uh, paper videos. And when I'm inspired by someone, the way they did things, it might not even be how they did it. It was just, I got sparked an idea. So I'm not even sure which one. I think it was Mix It Up Marcy. So I'm going to put um, a link to that video because without watching it again, I couldn't tell you for sure. But um, anyway, I was inspired by someone else. I believe it was Mix It Up Marcy. And what I ended up doing, because I watched that video at a time when I knew I was going to be doing this um, grungy style uh, journal. And if you have not watched the first one, uh, that was about my inspiration and how I came up with my process for uh, kind of developing my idea to make this journal. So... Mine's going to end up being a uh, made from scratch book cover, hard book cover from uh, food packets. In the last video, we got to this point where I just showed you how to build it that way. If you want to make a whole bunch of blanks like I have, then you'll have them around for uh, future projects. So we got to that point. <clears throat> and then uh, to do the finish on it, I had watched, like I said, I had watched that video, and I, this is a few weeks ago, I made all these papers just kind of playing around, 
And again, I'm using lots of book page for this project because I'm still trying to kind of work through my pile. And it's it's good for a vintage theme, I think. So um, I ended up making just a bunch of little sample papers. And I was trying in the process to clean off my mess from my previous uh, project. And so I took just made master boards out of scrap eight and a half by 11 copy paper. And then I took the book page or even in some cases, um, just the little pieces of, cof of, of plain copy paper. And I just kind of uh, collaged them all onto uh, the eight and a half by 11 in just kind of a master board style. And then I did practice these different finishes. And I'm only showing that because it's a great way to use up your scraps. And this is just showing you that I just did a bunch of different practice runs uh, with just this, a few just different little techniques to see what I could come up with that I might like for my uh, book cover. So for these, um, I'm gonna go start with how we're gonna cover this book cover and then go into how we're gonna do this paint finish. So <clears throat> the first thing you need are, is your book cover. And then I'm gonna use again my uh, Matte Mod Podge uh, just to use for my collaging. You can use Collage Podge, you can use uh, wa watered down white glue, anything that you use for your decoupage would work. So we're gonna do that. And then I've grabbed <clears throat> a bunch of just um, scraps of book page, different book page. And then in case I don't have enough because I'm doing, um, you know, a bunch of these at a time, I also like to grab some of my pile of uh, book page that have been torn out. And it's kind of nice to use different colors. So you can see all these are kind of um, different stages of yellowing. So we're going to use some of that. You could always, uh, once I've shown you this coffee finish, do these ahead and then just do a collage with those two would be kind of a fun thing. So uh, we're gonna start with that. Uh, so to do the um, the cover, the book, the book cover, I kind of like to uh, start on the outside of the book um, because I'm gonna fold over all the edges and I'm not gonna do this whole thing while we're on camera because that would just take too long. So I wanna get kind of the strategic little areas um, that we're going to do and then you can kind of see how those go on so first of all you're going to you you want them to go kind of different directions just randomly and you're going to want to go over I like to anyway go over all the edges instead of ending something like this where your edge would be showing I like to fold it have it have it go over um, just a little bit uh, in the end if you do this um let me find one that's, you would end up with, this is the outside that's done. And on this one, I haven't done the inside. Normally I would go through and then do this inside, but you can see where they're folded over all the edges. I've left this one because if you wanted to just use a decorative paper, like a floral or something like that, I don't need to do this all in book page. I can just wait and use my inside paper, my liner paper, can be just a solid paper. So you can do some, you know, where you do the both inside and out, which I've also, um, I've also done some like that. So um, you choose. So I'm gonna just um, attach a piece here. Just putting my little Mod Podge on. And then it's kind of handy to have a little credit card or your brayer just to get out, smoosh that down and get out any bubbles. And then you would just, Flip it over and get this side. So your fingers, in my case, get very gluey. So it's kind of nice to have a little wet baby wipe nearby to clean your fingers. <clears throat> and then maybe I'll get a different color piece of paper and do Let's see, a bigger one would be better though. And do over this uh, where my seam is. So to do that, I wanna kind of straddle the seam and have some to fold over. So I'm gonna just put some glue and do that. And then what I like to do here is you need some give in that bend you know, before it dries. 
So I kind of like to do my fold and make sure it's starting to kind of adhere before I open it because you see you'll get this little gap there. So I kind of just work with those as it's drying. I want that little bit of give, otherwise my paper will tear. So I just kind of make sure I, I have enough room for it to be able to fold. And just, you know, smoosh that down while it's, while it's drying. Okay, so then I need to do the inside part of that. And I found it's easier if you just snip in between where that, where this gap is. Um, and that makes it fold over a little bit easier because again, you, you're gonna have movement in your hinge of your book. Okay, so now I have two pieces. So you can just see that makes just a nice little clean corner. Okay, so that's kind of a strategic spot. And then if you are gonna do this inside, um, that can be a little tricky there too. So if you are going to, um, let me just put a little piece here in that seam. Because again, you have that gap there. So what I like to do is get it all smushed in there and then it needs to fold and you don't want a big void under that fold. So I just use my card and kind of push it into that, into that crevice. Now sometimes you'll get that will break and that's why we painted this um, in the last one with some white gesso. So that if that does show through, because it is just book page. So if it's old, it might be brittle you know, if you fold it back and forth. So you're just gonna kinda do that. And then the other strategic part are the corners. So we're gonna go back again to the outside. And let's get a different piece here. Let's get, we'll do down here maybe. So for this piece, I want a little bit hanging off the bottom and off of the side. So I'm gonna, Put a bunch of glue here since it's a big piece. And the fun thing about this is, you know, if you're using scraps, a lot of it's gonna get covered up. It's just a background. So, you know, you can go different directions and... Okay, so I have that with my corner. So it's just kind of like doing a gift package. You're just gonna miter that corner and then fold it over and seam on that side. So if you're not used to doing this, the more you do it, the better you'll get at it. Um, you can see this one I didn't do very well. There's a little bit of a gap. Um, and that's gonna be okay for the way that I'm doing this because I'm uh, gonna be adding some paint and other things to it. If you're doing it with, um, and leaving that where you're where you're gonna see it, then you wanna try to get it a little bit better of a fit. And that just comes with practice. So that's kind of why I like grungy because it's much more forgiving when you're trying to just, um, you know, make it look old. So those are kind of the strategic parts. So you wanna do the whole thing. And then if you do decide to do the whole inside, do that. And then you wanna coat the whole thing um, with Mod Podge again, just a protective layer before you start doing paint or anything on that, uh, just uh, to kind of give it a, a primer coat kind of thing. I'm gonna use this one. So this one has already um, been Mod Podged um, over the whole thing and it's dry. I've gone ahead and I've left the inside of it because maybe this one I wanna put just a solid paper or something in. So I'm giving myself the option. I can always go back later if I decide to do just book page and do the same paint finish. Um, I, can, I can do that too. So we'll set this one aside and we're gonna work on this one a little bit here. Um, again, this one I had done the same inside as outside. So that's kind of what we're aiming for. So the next step is um, a little bit of uh, gesso again with uh, a brayer. So 
I just, I'm using this uh, craft mat again. This is just the little Teflon craft mats from Ranger so that you can wipe everything up or if you have a glass one or something like that. But I found it, um, I don't want it to cover everything. So I found it easier if I put just a little bit on my, on my table <clears throat> and then just grab a brayer. This one I use for paint where the other one is used for glue. And then I'm just gonna kind of go over it. And you can see it kind of gives you that old um, plaster look, you know, peeling plaster, which is kind of goes with my whole vintage ghost town theme. And that's good, I can just leave that much, leaving some book page. You can still see um, the book page even through the gesso but then you have some gaps too. So I just kind of like how that is gonna look like a peeling plaster grunginess. So I'm not even gonna clean this right now, I'll just set it here. This is a very messy process and I should actually, this is what I should do, is since I have this pile of book page sitting here and I don't really wanna waste anything, so I go ahead and clean up my mat with a piece of book page. Okay, that's better than we don't waste. And then I actually have strung up, I my camera setup is um, a kind of an overhead thing and I have strung a piece of twine up here and then I'm using paper clips to dry my papers just kind of hanging up above me. I used to set them everywhere and it drove me crazy. And I thought I need a clothesline um, for my paper drying. So it, it's working out very well. Okay, so this is gonna dry now and I'll move to a different one that's already dry for the next step. So we'll take, um, let's take this one. So this one um, has already dried. And again, you can see I didn't, I hadn't used, uh, put the gesso in there, which I probably should have, uh, but I'm gonna be covering this anyway with something else. So I think it'll be okay. So this next step that I want, you're gonna need a water bottle. And I probably should have put more water in there. And I'm using this um, uh, Tim Holtz Distress Sprayer, and it's kind of neat. I, I watched a tutorial that he did on it. I, you would think it's a water bottle. How can it be special? But it, the way the trigger works, it is kind of neat. You can either spray it or you can make it kind of dribble. And so it is kind of a neat one. So I am using that. And then in the video that I watched where she was uh, like painting with coffee and doing it, she was using instant coffee. And I didn't have a big jar of it, but when I was digging around for my instant coffee, I also found that I had some instant matcha green tea. So that's green. And then I was gonna do um, some more experiments um, with maybe some spices like turmeric or cinnamon because they would be some kind of neat colors too. I haven't tried that yet, but I'm probably going to. Um, and these, this one here that I had done, you can kind of see it's kind of a, it has some other color on it. Those were um, some, powder pigments that I had. I don't know why I bought them or what they're intended to be for, but I remembered I had some, so I, I just used those and did the same kind of technique. Um, and maybe Easter egg dye comes in, in powders too now. I don't know, they used to be in the tablets. I don't know if they come in a powder form, but maybe you can grind up a tablet with like a, a mortar and pestle or something and do the same effect. So um, it's just kind of a, so simple to do. So I'm gonna start by just spritzing a little bit of water on my book because this instant coffee is just gonna dissolve in that water. And then I'm just gonna sprinkle it a little bit. And you can use as much or as little as you want. And if you watch, because I've already got that wet, that is gonna kinda of leave that effect. So you can just let it kinda of sit like that and just let it slowly dissolve and then you kind of get that granular look and you can see how it's kind of starting to bleed around. You can kind of leave it like that or you can add more water and then even kind of get enough that you kind of get some drips. Now 
Now, obviously, if you do too much, it's going to kind of wash it away. But you just play around with it. I mean, it's kind of gives you just that stained water kind of look. Um, and that's what was inside of the... If you watched my last video and I showed you what my inspiration was, you know, those buildings, when their roofs would go, uh, rain would just rain right into the rooms. And so you get all kinds of staining and that sort of thing. So that's the basic technique. Then the matcha green tea, you can add a little green if you want. And maybe it doesn't go with your theme or you don't want that color. Um, but say you're doing like a, a gardeny themed vintage one, you might like that looks like kind of mossy look. So that's with the green tea. And so it's just really pretty. I think it's just kind of a fun, couldn't be simpler. Uh, thing to do. So you kind of play around. Now, if you watch uh, Mix It Up Marcy's video, she does some other totally different things with um, the instant coffee, and you can do different textures um, by just even taking, I think, on one of these, on these. This kind of look is if you take your, your brayer and kind of go over, you can kind of give it a different look you know, or if you take another piece of paper, it doesn't take much, but you could even take, let's find a piece of book page. You can even take, you know, something and kind of pull some of it up if you've put more than you like, and it just kind of gives another little look as it's drying. So, you know, you just kind of play around and experiment, and then you have all these really pretty neat papers that once they dry too. I ended up with, um, just from yesterday, playing around and sopping it up just with some, you know, papers that I can use. So that is um, the technique. Now then there's the next part, you wanna let that dry. Uh, when this dries, because you're introducing so much water to it, you're going to get really wonky books. Uh, they're going to be kind of uh, bendy and weird. And all of mine were that way. But this one I worked on yesterday. And you can see now it's flat again. So I didn't even have to um, put a box or anything on this. It, it went back by itself. I, when I originally did them with all of the book page, they do get kind of uh, bendy, and I was going to look for one that I have done recently, but I don't really have it. Um, you know, they might end up a little warped, but then you just put a heavy box or books or something on top of it, and it'll flatten out again. So you can kind of see it's it's starting to want to bend a little bit. So you want to do that and let it dry. Um, I've let them dry maybe a couple of days after if, if I've gotten them really, really wet just so they can uh, dry out. So once you have your thing dried out and flat again, and I'm just gonna again use a, a book page to kind of clean up my mess, because when you're going for grungy, cleaning up your table is just a nice way to get more grunge on your paper. I'm just gonna I'm going to sop all this up. Okay. I need another clothespin for my, my drying rack. Okay, so next step is I'm going to clean this off a little bit. I mean, you could sit all day and just make grungy paper with how easy that is to do. Okay, so I'm cleaned up. Now the next thing that I want to do, if I find my, my finished book here, is the next thing I put on mine was some scrim. And where's my finished book? In scrim I've used, if you've been watching my videos, you know I use it a lot. It is um, a fabric, and I'm gonna grab a piece. Let's see. Oops. We almost had a major mishap with my my beautiful glass craft mat. Okay, where's my... 
I guess I was not as prepared as I thought with my scrim. Okay, so this is scrim. This is like a gauzy fabric. Um, it is probably a tighter weave than uh, maybe gauze, but less than muslin and more than cheesecloth, your kitchen cheesecloth. So I really like it because it's just kind of in between um, those two. So what I did was to get that frayed looking edge, and I don't know if this one is long enough to wrap all the way, ooh, just long enough, okay. So I want my scrim to go on the outside, but I want it to come all the way on the inside too. That way it'll kind of cover up those little gaps that I have. So this piece, luckily, I think is gonna be just barely, let me find maybe the widest spot. See if it'll go over. Yep, just barely. Okay, so I'm gonna tear to get that edge. Now let's see. Since one edge is not frayed yet, I'm gonna go ahead and start a whole new frayed edge. And then for the width of it, you can see that when I did that, it kind of snags and kind of ripples it up. You can just pull that by hand, flatten it out again. And I actually even used my iron when I did it, but I'm probably not gonna do that on camera here. We'll just be kind of messy with it. So you kind of lay it out and you can see I'm getting kind of that frayed edge, pull some of these threads off. And then I wanna check my width. And depending on the width of your spine, you want to have it be at least that wide, and then you want to have it come over kind of a nice proportion for your book. My original one is, it's about an inch onto the covers, and my spine was an inch and a quarter. So, you know, if I do it too skinny, it won't look good. If I do it too wide, it won't look good. So you kind of just eyeball. So on this one, it's a two inch spine. So let's see what two, two inches kind of looks like a little bit, maybe an inch and three quarters or so. So let's see, that's two, three, four, uh, five and a half, we'll call it. So I need my, my scrim to be five and a half inches wide. So let's see. I'm just gonna make a little cut at the end, which you probably couldn't see. And then tear it. So again, you can see that it kind of gets gathered up. So you can iron it, like I said. I keep my iron set up all the time that's where I use uh, my paper cutter. And then I, I, I know I'm weird, but I like to iron. So I always have it set up. And then you, when you're sewing or anything, you've got it. Okay, so that's our piece of scrim that's gonna be our uh, uh, over our spine. And I can't remember when I did this, actually, what I used to glue it down. Part of me thinks maybe a glue stick even, but this do kind of a test run and see. Yeah, see that's kind of a good a good amount, I think. So I don't when I when I did this one, I can feel that it's um that I, I may not have used Mod Podge. I'm not even sure because I did this a few weeks ago. I could have maybe used glue stick. It's it feels soft still and you know if you use Mod Podge on the outside like if I went over this it would be really stiff and hard. So I'm almost thinking I, I didn't do that, but I'm gonna just wing it and try um, because that's what I have out right now and just do a really thin layer. And I'm just gonna do the center for right this minute here because I want to, I don't have to worry so much about where they meet on the other side, but I want them to kind of be look even on this side.
So I'm gonna lay that out. See, I love how you can still see through all that grunginess. And I think this might, might work. I thought maybe, I wasn't sure if maybe I had used just glue stick. Um, but I didn't get it too wet, and I think that's a good thing because I want this to st stay feeling like fabric. So now I can go over and do this side. Now when you iron it, you can kind of get all these little frays coming out nice and straight. But I think with the glue, you can do that too. Let's see, I might even use this. And again, I'm going for grungy. So I love that because then it doesn't have to be perfect. And I kind of, I'm remembering that in the windows of those, the ghost town uh, buildings, some of them would have like tattered, you know, tattered lace or even what looks kind of like some gauzy fabric like this hanging in the windows still. Um, so that's kind of my nod to that. Again, without being too literal, Okay, so that is all on there without too much glue. And then you wanna make sure that it'll fold. Yeah, I just love that. Okay, don't get so excited here. So I wanna make sure, you know, it, again, it's kind of like when you put the page, see how it will kind of gap there. So as it's kind of drying, you wanna make sure you have enough glue. That one maybe could have used a little bit more. Work it down with my card. Okay, that's pretty good. Okay, and we're gonna do the inside, same thing. This is a little easier. And again, I don't really care where it meets so much because it's going to get covered. This, this spine, the center is going to be covered with my book anyway, my signatures. Looking out at the weather today, we actually got a little tiny bit of snow last night. So I always kind of like that. This time of year when you get snow, at least for here where I am, we don't get a whole ton of snow. Um, we don't, this time of year, it's so warm, we, we don't get very much and it doesn't last. So it, it's really a nice kind of snow. You don't have to plow anything. Okay, that looks pretty good. I just love how these look. That's why I kind of went ahead and made up, I am making up a bunch of different size books, little ones, big ones, whatever. Um, I'm hoping, I did a vintage show a uh, year before last. It got canceled, of course, with everything else last year um, here in our town called Eddy Street Vintage Market. Um, it's just the neatest place. You can go look online for her, um, at Eddy Street Vintage Market. She's a pop-up once a month here in town, but she does an artisan, a vintage artisan um, weekend in August. And I was a vendor there a couple years ago for my jewelry. And this year, I would like to also include, if she does it, um, some of my other things that I do, including these journals. So I'm hoping that um, I can get some stuff together just in case uh, she does it this year. I hope so. It's kind of, I really miss getting out. I don't get out a lot, but I miss that whole, um, you know, like-minded people who do that sort of thing. It's fun to get out and actually see your customer, you know. I don't, when you just do things online, uh, you don't have a 
personal contact with people. So it's a fun week, a fun day. It's actually just a one day thing. Okay, so now we have our cover with the scrim on it. And you might want to think, I haven't decided on mine or thought about it yet, is uh, what kind of closure I might want to do. I have no idea. So I'll share that when I do. But I'm thinking something rusty or old, of course. So that is our cover with scrim on it. Now you can see that that color is still not kind of what I had here. And I think what I did was, um, at this point you can take some, uh, you can take your distress inks even if you wanted to add, you know, little spurts here or there of, of you know, your vintage photo. Let me grab some and see what happens. You can use, um, you know, some of these little sprays maybe to, to do some, you know, more layering. This is some um, uh, vintage photo too, I think. Yeah, and just kind of a, this re-inker sort of thing, you know. You can, you can do that. You can do your, um, this is my vintage photo oxide with my little dauber. So you can kind of just do some more aging if you want, kind of thing. So the fun thing about these is they can all be different, you know, one of a kind, different deal. But you can kind of, I think this is good for dirtying up that, the frayed part. It kind of highlights it a little bit more. It's kind of easier to do once it's really dry, but you get the idea, I think. Because I'm kind of thinking, you know, this could be just kind of a first layer and I could even still embellish this this more, um, you know, you know, putting a tag and stuff on the back. But I kind of wanted to get you to this point so that you could think about your cover and just kind of do some, you know, random papers, because like I said, I'm gonna do, um, I think end up doing a bunch of my own papers. I mentioned it in my last, in the last video that I wanted to do maybe some of my own, uh, instead of using paper packs again. I tell you, doing that last series, it, it really unleashed a whole different creative side of me. And I, I like that. I mean, that's kind of when I started doing this, I wanted to get into learning how to do mixed media art. And so, you know, doing these different finishes, doing your own papers are more of kind of combining those, the two things. I'll give you a little sneak peek of another um, thing I was doing with papers. And like I said, I, uh, in the last one, I want to do... Um, all of these backgrounds, some just plain backgrounds. And by plain, I mean just taking, you know, a picture of the wood. I've embellished this, not embellished, but I've accentuated this with some other things, some paint and stains and things too. So it's a little more than just the, uh, the picture of the wood um, because I want to enhance all that again. So my plan is to do some of these background papers and leave them kind of at this stage. That way, if you want to add your touches to them, it's just a background. So I'm hoping that in the next coming couple of weeks, I'll have all of these on my Etsy shop. And when I do that, I will, um, I'll even go back to like the last video and put a link to that in the description so that you can go find these in case you are doing the same theme or one similar and you want to download these papers. I, I probably will also have freebies from time to time. Again, you'll find those in the description. So always check the descriptions because I may have added some free download things, um, you know, in that video. Here's another one um, that I had done, and this was kind of that double exposure I was talking about. So I had actually taken, um, I don't know if you can see in the background is a wood grain, 
That was just a piece of old barn wood that I took. And then this floral is, I have this collection. I had mentioned last time that I, I collect old books and this is a, a complete collection of Shakespeare and they're falling apart and I just love this. In fact, I had to laugh. I, I don't know if I should even point this out. This was so funny. So I collect old books and years ago, before I ever heard of what junk journaling was, I, 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 I actually had a blog. It's still actually up. It's on Blogspot and it's called a junkers journal blogspot.com. I had a thing and have it's still up a blog called a junkers journal because I would take junk. I called myself a junker. I would take junk and then I would repurpose it, refinish things, turn things into other things, you know, lamps out of junk and that kind of stuff. And this was my card and I had actually taken a picture of the spines of these books was my actual card and I found this the other day. So that's what it was on the back of a, as I was looking for things to take pictures of and ideas, I saw that and I haven't seen that in years. So that was so funny. But I took that, um, this inside paper on these book, you can see each one's a little different. Some of them are water stained, so I'll need to take some more. But um, that was what I used to uh, make this paper. And so it's, you know, you can change the opacity so that you can see one thing through the other. Uh, and that was kind of my double exposure idea. I wanna do more of that and even more layers. I found this picture in, one, in my stack of book pages and I thought, oh, this could be neat. Now, I don't know, I don't know what this came out of. And so I'm, there's probably some copyright thing. So if anyone can answer this question for me, if I were to take this picture and um, change the opacity of it and have it be part of a paper. So you're seeing like, it almost make her ghostly, I think. And it's a ghost town thing. So it may be too creepy, but um, I was thinking about playing around with something like that. If you manipulate something that much and put that over that, over that, over that, is that infringing on copyright? I don't know. So I have, I have that question if anybody knows that answer. I did look on, um, because I have a, another Shakespeare book that had artwork from someone that were all drawings and they're really neat drawings and I didn't know if I could copy those. I looked up copyright law and it actually, if it was from nine, after 1978, if it was like, I don't know, 50 years after the death of the artist, ironically, I looked up the artist and he died in March of 50 years ago. If you can believe that, how close it was. It was like to the week that I was looking it up. So I don't know if if this was a book copyrighted in like the 30s. So I don't know if that law after 1978 applies to things. I, I just don't know. So if anybody knows the answers to those copyright things, please let me know. So I'm just new to all this and I don't want to break any laws, but um, there's just so many neat things out there uh, that I'd like to to use, but manipulating them. You know, I'm not gonna just like take a picture of that and sell it like that. But anyway, so if you know the answer to that. Um, the other thing that I'm gonna put in the description of this video, uh, because it's something else that I'm working on for my book, I'm just kind of, you know, starting to develop my ideas. And one of the things it, when I do these signatures is that I'm gonna use um, some coffee, different coffee stained papers uh, and I have a video, um, how I coffee stain papers. So I'm gonna put, I won't go into that again because there's a zillion videos on it, but I will put a link to the, the video that I did on how I coffee stained my papers. So that if you wanna, you know, if you're getting your materials together now and kind of starting to think about your journal, that um, you might wanna go ahead and do some papers like that ahead of also. And I may, um, some of these, if they've turned out really neat with just the way this, the, the coffee stain is, I may take, you know, uh, scans of these and use them for backgrounds. And if I do that, I will probably include those maybe as freebies for downloads. Um, that way, if you don't want to, you know, take the time to stain, coffee stain a bunch of paper, you would at least have some that have that look um, that you can download for this project. So I will include that too. That's gonna take me a bit of time to get all those together. Uh, so I hope that you 
Have a great rest of your day. Get your, you know, instant coffee out and go play and go make something. Bye.